dimensional analysis and modeling uh, from the book or dimensional analysis and simplitude so if you guys can hear me correctly and uh, if you guys can see then i will uh, go to the presentation mode so i'm going to switch off my camera go to presentation mode and now i will be presenting my screen okay so i hope you guys can see the screen uh, clearly okay so let us start chapter number 5 so chapter number 5 is all about dimensions how to derive dimensions what are the units what is a non dimensional parameter how to derive non dimensional parameters okay in this chapter we are going to review the concept of dimensions and units we are going to then review the fundamental principles of dimensional homogeneity so first we are going to see what is a dimension and what are the primary dimensions what are units okay then we are going to learn about uh, dimensional analysis or what we call homogeneity whether an equation or a dimension is homogeneous or non homogeneous so homogeneity m o h o m o g n i t y okay then the third is we are going to see what is similarity whether a dimension can have a similar uh, units or formulas as that of model or prototype so this is something which we are going to learn in similarity similarity topic <clears throat> okay and the, the fourth thing which we are going to learn is buckingham pi theorem buckingham pi theorem so in buckingham pi theorem we are going to learn how do we derive non dimensional parameters okay so we are going to start step by step first you are going to start with a dimension what is a dimension and what is a unit so i am going to open my slides and we will go for the first slide so the objective of, of this current uh, uh, chapter is basically to explain the concept and applications of dimensional analysis okay so then the second thing is they are going to learn and tell us what is buckingham pi theorem so this is coming quite uh, later on in our chapter so we are going to learn buckingham pi theorem in our next class and then to explain and apply geometrical kinematic and dynamic similarity this is something which we are going to learn today so these are more or less the objectives of our uh, chapter number 5 <clears throat> so before we start with uh, chapter number 5 let me add a student so before i am going to start chapter number 5 let's take a look at this picture or this example this picture it may seems like this is a toy boat or something if you look at this picture it's a very small boat looks like a toy boat right and it is on in a very small pool but this is a model of united states destroyer navy ship okay this is not a toy this is a model for united states navy destroyer navy fleet destroyer and what is happening is that this navy destroyer has been scaled down to a very small model this is a very small model of the actual ship and what they are doing is they have put this model in a test bench okay they have put this in a testing tunnel and they are testing the properties of this very small model and then they are going to predict the properties of a larger actual ship so what happens here is that 
let's say this is an actual ship okay united states destroyer okay this is an actual ship this actual ship is called prototype so the name of this actual ship ship or any actual uh, any actual wait a second or anything which is actual like an actual car or an actual testing rig something is called prototype p r o t o t y p e prototype okay and if i am going to make a very small model okay then a small model of this is called model okay so we have prototype and we have model okay okay so what happens is that i can test i can test test model okay and predict properties of prototype predict properties of prototype okay so what i can do is that i don't need to make this i no no need to build this whole ship no need to build this ship no need to build the ship what i can do is make a very small model make a very small model okay and then uh, by making a small model i can predict the properties of ship okay okay so let's say that my model has a velocity coming of 100 okay so using non dimensional parameters pi i can predict the properties of ship very easily so this is called similarity this condition is called similarity and the way to predict this similarity is using non dimensional parameter non dimensional non dimensional parameter and non dimensional parameter is denoted by pi pi okay so this is something which we are going to learn and which we are going to see in this chapter so the the, the reason why we have this uh, uh, model is that we do our testing on small models and then we predict the properties of an actual ship that is why the these united states guys are basically building a small model putting it in a testing rig okay they have this is a testing rig there is some water and then the, uh, the water will be flowing or there will be some waves in this rig okay and then they are going to predict the properties of the actual ship using this model so this is the concept okay so so let us let us start dimensions and unit let us start our slide for dimensions a simpler one let's start with the simple thing okay what is dimension what is dimension what is unit okay what are seven primary dimensions okay and what are the three most important dimensions okay 
So what is dimension? What is unit? What are the seven primary dimension? And what are the three most primary important dimensions? So let's have a look. A dimension basically is a measure of physical quantity without numerical values. That's very simple. And a unit is basically a way to assign number. So let's say that my dimension is mass. Then Okay, whereas mass is basically a primary dimension. It is a measure of physical quantity. Okay. Now there are seven primary dimensions. Okay, what are those seven primary dimensions? Mass, length, time. Temperature, current, amount of matter, and amount of light. Okay, so we have seven. Primary dimension: mass, length, time, temperature, current, amount of light, and amount of matter. But for the sake of simplicity, of course, we are going to use only mass, length, and time. So in this course, we are only going to work with mass, length, and time. Mass is denoted by denoted by capital M. Length is denoted by Capital L and time is denoted by capital T. So we are going to play with these M L T. Three important dimensions. Okay. So, so in the example, it's given here, dimension of a force. So let's take a look at the dimension of a force. Force is equals to mass into acceleration, okay? What is mass? Mass is capital M. Acceleration is distance in uh, velocity over time. So it's uh, length per unit time square. Okay, so we can write force as m l t t goes up and becomes minus two. So that force in terms of primary dimension is mass, length, time minus two, where mass has a one length is also one, and t is minus two. So we can write dimension in this form. What is acceleration? Acceleration is length t minus two. Okay. So this is how we define primary dimensions. Uh, so there are seven primary dimensions which I've discussed already: mass, length, time, MLT, temperature is denoted by theta, current is amperes. Okay, amount of light is candela C or CD, amount of matter is uh, N or mole. Okay, but in this course we are going to learn the first three dimensions. Okay. So let's move to next slide. So there is one very easy numerical, okay? Example number 7.1. Okay. In example 7.1, it is saying that an engineer is studying how some in insects are able to walk on water. So if you see this insect, okay? 
this insect is basically able to walk on water why it is able to walk on water because of its properties of lowering the surface tension this insect is called a water strider water strider okay a water strider is basically an insect that can walk on water due to surface tension this property surface tension is very important so what it is saying the it is saying that an engineer is studying how some insects are able to walk on water as shown in figure a fluid property of important in this problem is surface tension denoted by sigma s so surface tension is denoted by sigma greek letter sigma s okay <clears throat> which has a dimension of force per unit length so sigma s is equals to force per unit length okay write the dimensions and surface tension in terms of primary dimensions so in the exam i will be asking you guys write the primary dimension of this equation write the primary dimensions dimensions okay so what you need to do is you need to write in the form of mlt remember you need to write or convert this formula into mlt okay so since sigma s is equals to force per unit length okay we know force is m 1 l 1 t minus 2 okay whole divided by length l okay so l l cancel out so sigma okay the dimension sigma is equals to we put the curly brackets m t minus 2 or m over t to the power 2 so this is my answer for getting or evaluating primary dimensions so my lec my lecture part for primary dimensions is finished primary dimensions is finished now at this point you guys know that if i give you a formula of force or surface tension or acceleration or weight or maybe viscosity then you can calculate you are able to calculate the primary dimensions of that formula okay now that you know that you can calculate the primary dimensions what are the rules for dimensional homogeneity okay let's move to second topic dimensional homogeneity <clears throat> what is dimensional homogeneity okay now as you guys have learned and we know an old saying that you cannot you cannot add apples and oranges together okay in the figure also you can see we have got two apples and then you have got two oranges but you cannot add them because they are inherently different their dimension is different if you have got an apple mobile and then you have got a sample samsung mobile you cannot add them so apple plus samsung will not be give you apple or it will not give you samsung okay this is because their their characteristics are inherently different okay so the law of dimensional homogeneity states that every term every apple okay every term should have same dimensions so i can add apples together or i can add oranges together but i cannot add apples and oranges together okay so this law states that every additive terms every additive term in an equation must have the same dimensions okay 
position. Okay. So every additive term in an equation must have same dimensions. So this, this is very important. So we are going to take a look at uh, one example. So the example here, in this example, we are given an equation. This equation is that the change in energy of a system is equals to the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Delta means change. Now, according to our dimensional homogeneity concept or principle, this equation, in this equation, all the terms should have same primary dimensions. If they have same primary dimensions, then only this equation is valid and each individual term can add up. If this equation is dimensionally homogeneous, it means that it has same primary dimensions for each parameter. So let's take a look at how each of them is same. So energy, so if we look here, you can see the equation. Delta U is called internal energy of a system. Delta U is equals to mass into U2 minus U1. Okay. Mass has a unit. This is equals to, and U is basically energy per unit mass. U1 or U2 is energy per unit mass. Okay. So my, uh, this is mass multiplied by energy per unit mass. Okay, mass, mass cancel each other out. I'm left with energy. Okay. What is the unit of energy? Energy is equals to force multiplied by length. What is force? M L T minus two multiplied by L, both one, one, okay? So it becomes M L two T minus two. This is the unit of energy. Okay. okay. So my delta U also is equals to energy is equals to M L two T minus two. Okay. Now let's move to, let's pick kinetic energy, delta Ke. Okay. Kinetic energy is equals to half m v2 square minus v1 square. Okay. So basically, the unit of mass is m and the unit of velocity is meter per second so length per time and this is square whole square okay so this becomes m l square over t square is equals to m l t square minus 2 so my kinetic energy units are also same let's move to potential energy delta p e is equals to density, sorry, mass into gravity into height two minus height one. Z two minus Z one is height two minus height one. What is the unit of mass? It is m. What is gravity? Meter per second square. So L over T square. And what is the dimension of Z? Is L. So this becomes m L square t minus 2. So you can notice that 
the unit for potential energy is same as kinetic energy this is same as internal energy and this is equals to same as energy okay it means that our equation is valid this is a valid equation which means that it is dimensionally homogeneous this equation is dimensionally homogeneous so any questions so far no sir no, no sir. okay thank you so for those who came late a recorded lecture will be given a recorded session will be uploaded on kalam so no worries let's move to slide number next slide so now that i have driven the dimensions or primary dimension of energy in a similar way uh, in the slide in the table you can see that other primary dimensions of different formulas are given areas primary dimension is meter square or l square velocity is meter per second means l1 t minus 1 t inverse then volume flow rate mass flow rate force work power density viscosity pressure pressure is not given newton per meter square so if i want to uh, obtain the primary dimension of pressure pressure is force per unit area force is ml t minus 2 whole divided by area is l square so the primary dimension of pressure is m l minus 1 t minus 2 <clears throat> so in the exam i i will just give you derive uh, primary dimension of maybe one of these formulas okay so quite simple <clears throat> so let's move to next slide now this is similarity now now we move to similarity we have covered primary dimensions we have covered dimensional homogeneity now we are going to move to similarity what is similarity okay similarity <clears throat> as i said earlier that we have got prototype and then we have got a model a prototype is something which we see in, in our real life applications let's say a real car but if i'm going to make a very small scale model of that a prototype then it's called a model using the properties of model i can predict the properties of prototype using the properties of prototype i can predict the properties of a model okay why what is why we make small models small models are made basically to save time okay making a small model is easier compared to making an actual product so it is going to save time it is going to save testing space i can test this uh this ship basically in a small space okay but if i have got a very large ship then i need a, a lot of space to test that ship so that is why similarity concept help us to make very small things and predict the properties of large things large things being prototype and small things means model okay so how to compare these things how to compare the properties of prototype or model and how to predict the properties of prototype using the properties of a small model okay that is when similarity concept comes into 
place so that is why in real life engineering equations are basically not known i don't know what is the equation to solve this ship so sometimes we need to do experiments to determine the properties and to determine the uh, equations for this ship to do experiments i want to reduce the size reduce the cost save space etc okay so that is why similarity concepts comes into place in most experiments to save time money tests are performed on geometrically scaled model so this model this model is geometrically geometrically scaled model this term is very very important and in the assumptions for numericals in the assumptions you need to write this statement you need to write that assuming this model is geometrically scaled okay once you write this assumption then you will go you are going to get full marks for solving the numerical so this assumption is very important that uh, the model is geometrically scaled okay that is very important <clears throat> prototype is very large as we know okay how to def how, how to say uh, is very large we say it is full scale full scale so if in the exam i tell you i have a full scale object it means it is prototype if i tell you i have a geometrically scaled model as c this is c i have a geometrically scale mod scale object then it is called a model okay so in such cases care must be taken to properly scale the results we introduce here a powerful technique called dimensional analysis now what are the objectives of dimensional analysis there are three primary objectives and purpose for doing this dimensional analysis number one is to generate non dimensional parameter this non dimensional parameter now you will say what is non dimensional parameter right but you guys have already learned in fluid mechanics what is non dimensional parameter obviously non dimensional parameter means a parameter which does not have any dimension okay so non dimensional non dimensional parameter our objective is to generate non dimensional parameter what is non dimensional parameter something which has no dimension and in chapter number 3 and in chapter number 4 you learned about a parameter called reynolds number okay let's say reynolds number is 2400 but it has no dimension no unit no dimension renault number has no unit and no dimension it means it is non dimensional parameter similarly friction factor f f for laminar was 64 over re okay so this is also non dimensional okay so what this similarity rule say is that we need to generate non dimensional parameter so that we can predict the values of prototype by using the values of uh, non dimensional uh, non dimensional parameters of model so if i know the non dimensional let's say renolds number of my model then i can predict the renolds number of prototype this is what it is saying this uh, this line number 1 okay to obtain scaling loss so that the prototype performance can be predicted from model performance what is scaling law number 2 is scaling law 
scaling law is very simple it means that let's say uh my ship my ship prototype okay is basically 10 times larger than my ship model it means that this my scale when i talk about my scale then my ship prototype is 10 times scales than ship model so this is basically a simple scale okay how much times your prototype or model is scaled okay so in the exam in the question this scale number is given in the question the scaling is given so the more lesser is my size of model easy it is for me to test okay so the more smaller the scale the the higher the scale the smaller the size of model smaller the size of model then i can uh chain i then i can predict the values okay so scale first thing is non dimensional parameter then scale i need to know what is the scale okay then number 3 to predict trends in a relationship between parameters okay so number 3 number 3 is relationships relationship between parameters this one is something also you already know let's say if i talk about hydrostatic pressure okay hydrostatic pressure increases with respect to height okay so if here i have uh, height and here is my pressure okay so as the height increases the pressure also increases so this is basically relationship relationship okay so similarly i can define relationship between prototype and model also okay so these are the primary purpose for doing dimensional analysis number 1 is generate non dimensional parameters such as rod number fraud number nusel number number 2 is to obtain scale loss scale loss is basically given so it's not to obtain it's usually given in the numerical and number 3 is to predict trends and this is something which we can predict so this was more or less about this slide now a very important thing is similarity how many types of similarities types of similarities okay before discussing the technique of dimensional analysis we first explain the concept of dimensional analysis or the principle of similarity types of similarity come from principle of similarity principle of similarity okay to have a similarity to have similarity between model and prototype prototype and model if i want to have similarity between model and prototype i need to fulfill three condition i need to fulfill three condition condition 1 condition 2 condition 3 condition number 1 is geometric similarity number 2 is kinematic 
and number three is dynamic. I cannot get similarity unless and until these three conditions are fulfilled. The first condition is called geometric similarity. Condition number one. Geometric similarity means that the model must have the same shape as prototype. It says that the shape of prototype and model should be same. Okay, geometric similarity is states that the model must be the same shape as prototype, but can be scaled by some constant scale factor. The shape can be same. Okay, but the size can be scaled by a factor x. It could be two times, it could be three times, it could be four times, it could be ten times. So we are allowed scaling but the shape should be same okay the second condition is kinematic similarity kinematic similarity states that the velocity at any point in a flow must be proportional by a constant factor to a velocity at the corresponding point in a prototype flow so the velocity should be proportional okay and specifically for kinematic velocity uh, the similarity for kinematic similarity the velocity at the point must scale in magnitude and must point in the same direction so the velocity magnitude can be scaled by 2 3 10 and its direction should be same direction same okay so let's say if i've got uh, my model and this is my prototype okay then the velocity direction of the air should be same and the magnitude also should be same. This is model, this is prototype. Geometric similarity is called length scale equivalence. And kinematic similarity is called time scale equivalence. Okay. Let's move to dynamic similarity. Dynamic similarity is achieved when all the forces in the model Okay, when all the forces in the model flow scale by a constant factor of corresponding forces in the prototype. So this is called force. Okay, so the force should be also proportional and should be scaled by some factors. Okay, so geometric, length base, kinematic, velocity base, dynamic, force base. When all these conditions are similar, then similarity is achieved between prototype and model. And using the properties of model, I can predict the properties of prototype. So any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will proceed. <clears throat> now now that i know what is similarity okay i need to understand what is non dimensional parameter okay non dimensional parameter let's say renault's number floyd's number friction factor these are non dimensional parameters okay non dimensional parameter I need a relationship between model and prototype to have a relationship between model and prototype I need non dimensional parameter okay non dimensional parameter is denoted by a function called pi okay this is p 
pi. This is denoted by pi. Okay, Greek letter pi. In general, the dimensional analysis problem, there is only one pi that we call uh, dependent, and it is given in notation pi one. Okay, so let's say I have this boat. Okay, air is flowing very fast on the boat. Okay, air has a velocity v. Okay. Air has a density rho. This boat has a length of L. Okay. And uh, uh, so, so what I know is that these velocity, density, length are independent variables. Okay. And Reynolds number. Re is dependent variable because it is dependent on rho v d over mu. So we have dependent variables and we have independent variables. Independent variables do not depends on anything. And dependent variable Reynolds number something depends on the values of independent variable. Okay. So when we talk about dependent variables, okay, dependent. variables they are denoted by pi 1 dependent variable is denoted by pi 1 and independent variables is don't can be denoted by pi to pi 3 and so on until pi to the power k okay now we know that dependent variable pi 1 is a function of other independent variables so we can write pi 1 is a function of other independent variables pi 2 pi 3 and so on until pi k okay <clears throat> so to ensure complete similarity the model and prototype must be geometrically similar and all the independent and all the independent groups must match between model and prototype okay what does it mean it means that I have my small ship, I have my large ship, okay, then this has pi 1 model and this will be donated by non-dimensional independent variable, uh, sorry, pi 1 was uh, dependent, so pi 1 is dependent and this is pi 1 dependent for prototype similarly pi 2 model pi 3 pi 2 prototype pi 3 model pi 3 prototype and so on until pi k model so on until pi p uh, pi k prototype okay so what it says is that these non-dimensional parameters should be equal due to similarity rule so similarity rule says that if pi 2 model is equals to pi 3 prototype if pi k model is equals to pi k prototype for independent variables then pi 1 m should be equals to pi 1 prototype it, it, this is very simple so if i have a reynolds number for uh, my model 
then it I, I can equate it with my Reynolds number of prototype something like this very simple <clears throat> So I hope everything is clear until here, and then we will move to next slide. So let's move to slide, next slide. Okay. So I have got a very large car here. You can see this is a prototype and the small car is a model. Okay. Now you can see that the air is coming at a velocity and striking this large car. Okay, I want to, I want to basically predict the properties of this large scale car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a toy car or a small car, okay, model car, and I'm going to use similar conditions, and then I'm going to predict the properties of a large car. Okay, so my car has a length of model for my model car. The length of the car is L M. For model car, the velocity is Vm, the dynamic viscosity is mu m, and the density of the air is rho m. Okay, so uh, once again, it is saying that to save money, we test small models. Okay, we can predict the properties of full scale with properties matching the prototype using geometric similarity and etc. Okay, now before starting, they have given the formula already. Okay, they have given the formula. Formula number one is that that pi one is a function of pi two. Pi one is dependent. Pi two is independent. Okay, what is pi one? They have given pi one is equals to Fd. This is called drag force divided by density, velocity square, L square, and pi two is Reynolds number. Pi two is equals to rho v L over <laughs> mu. Remember that in our previous course we were doing problems for piping. In piping, the Reynolds number is rho v d over mu. Okay, this is d, and remember that d was called characteristics length. Characteristic length. Okay, so for piping, characteristics length is diameter, but for our car, characteristics length is the length of the car okay so d is characteristics length for pipe it is diameter and for our car it is length anyway so we are given two dimensional parameters pi 1 and pi 2 okay and the relationship between pi 1 and pi 2 is also given <laughs> this is called reynolds number basically so i can write pi 2 or i can write reynolds number because uh, many scientists, scientists, they basically identified these number. So these pi's were given their names. So for Renault, Renault was given. Renault was the scientist who basically identified this number, dimensionless number. So that is why the name of pi 2 was given to Renault's number. That is why there are many numbers which are given to uh, other scientists, to scientists. And when we talk about pi 1 here, pi 1 is basically coefficient of drag formula. This you will learn in fluid mechanics too. Okay. Pi 1 is coefficient of drag. Coefficient of drag is equals to Fd. This is drag force. Fd is called drag force. How much force of drag is acting on a body? Divided by density into velocity square into length square. So not much difference between the two formulas except for the drag force and some square of variables. Anyways, so this is what it is given. Okay. So using the formulas given, now I can define or identify similarities between these model and prototype. 
so let's take a look at example example number 7.5 So what is this example saying? Similarity between model and prototype cars. So this example is all about cars. The aerodynamic drag, the drag force which we just learned, the aerodynamic drag of a new sports car is to be predicted at a speed of 50 miles per hour. So I've got this model car in using model car, I want to predict the speed of the car, okay? So the aerodynamic drag of a new sp sports car is to be predicted at a speeds of 50 miles per hour at an air temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. Automotive engineers build one fifth scale model. So this one fifth scale is geometrical similarity or a geometrical scale, okay? So one fifth scale model has to be prepared. It means that if the length of my prototype is L, then the length of my model will be one fifth of the prototype. Okay. So automotive engineers build one fifth scale model of a car to test in a wind tunnel. So this is basically a wind tunnel. Okay. It is winter. So now the conditions are different and the wind tunnel is located in an unheated building. So I don't have any heating as well. So my temperature has changed. So I'm going to test my model on different temperature, but I will predict the uh, prototypes uh, properties at a different temperature. That is also something I can do. So I test my model car on a different temperature, but I can predict the properties of my prototype at a different temperature as well. So the model's temperature is different, model's velocity is different, model's uh, scale is different, uh, I mean the size. So I can predict the properties of model, sorry, uh, prototype using uh, testing conditions and similarity. Anyways, so it is winter and the wind tunnel is located in an unheated building. The temperature of the wind tunnel air is about five degrees centigrade. Determine how fast the engineer should run the wind tunnel in order to achieve similarity between model and prototype. Okay. So let's go to, so this is basically a wind tunnel section. I've got this car, a drag balance is used. This is a drag balance. Okay. It's like a treadmill for car. So my car is basically running, but uh, the treadmill, treadmill is also running. So a drag balance is used in a wind tunnel to measure the aerodynamic drag of a body when the testing automobile models a moving belt so here i've got a belt okay and then this car is running on a belt a moving bolt belt is also often added to the floor of the wind tunnel to simulate the moving ground from car's frame of reference okay so what are the assumptions these are the air conditions given and then we need to first do assumption compressibility of the air is negligible okay the wind tunnels were, walls are far enough okay so the wind tunnel walls are far enough because in real condition when i'm driving a car there are no walls okay i'm driving in an open air so i am predicting that in the wind tunnel also my walls are far enough so that they are not affecting the properties then condition number three is that the mod model is geometrically similar that is very important for you to write the model is geometrically similar to the prototype. Then number four, the wind tunnel has a moving belt to simulate the ground under the car. So this is something that we have to uh, assume. So now let's uh, move to solution. <clears throat> so let's write what is given and assumptions. So given, What is given is that, uh, so the temperature for my model is five degrees centigrade, okay? The temperature for my prototype, which I want to know the properties is 25 degrees centigrade, okay? I am testing this, my fluid is air, okay? So using tables, 
using property tables, I need to predict the density of air for model and density of air for prototype. This is something I can get from the table. Also, I can get the dynamic visco oh, sorry, yeah, dynamic viscosity of my model and dynamic viscosity of my air from the table as well. Okay. So so let's move to the solution. And it's important to write assumptions as well. Assumption number one is incompressible. Number two is geometrically similar. Number three is wall effect negligible. And number four is this uh, drag balance drag balance same as road conditions actual road conditions okay so let's move to the solution so using the table i can get the properties of fluid so at 25 degrees centigrade the air density is 1.184 and at 5 degrees centigrade the air density is 1.269 1.269 and the density for my uh, the dynamic viscosity is 1.849 1.849 and uh, 1.75 1.754 now the Reynolds number for model is equals to rho v l over mu model 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 the Reynolds number for prototype is equals to rho v l over mu this is prototype 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 and prototype okay also i know that the length of model is five times the length sorry is one fifth of prototype so length of model is lp divided by five okay i know the density I know the uh, dynamic viscosity. I know the model length in terms of prototype. I know this also. I know uh, viscosity prototype. I know the length prototype, okay? And given is that the speed of uh, the model velocity, velocity prototype given is 50, miles per hour okay so using condition of similarity okay using condition of similarity pi 2m they 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 have denoted Reynolds number as pi 2m okay so this is Reynolds number model and pi 2p is equals to Reynolds number prototype. Okay, so under equation of similarity, pi 2m is equals to pi 2p. It means Reynolds number model is equals to Reynolds number prototype. Okay, so this implies that. Velocity model is equals to VP over multiply by 
uh, something which is given in this example mu m over mu p multiply by density of prototype over density of model and the ratio of length which is l p over l m okay so now you can you know that uh, at which velocity your car should run for the model so when i'm going to put the values i will get 2 to 1 miles per hour okay so to predict the values sorry to to have similarity okay if my velocity of my uh, prototype is 50 if velocity prototype is 50 then to obtain condition of similarity i need to run my model at 221 mile per hour okay so to ensure similarity the wind tunnel should be run at 221 miles per hour and note that uh, we were not giving the actual length right so the value of length was was not given just scale was given one fifth still using scale we can determine the properties so this was quite simple uh, similarity uh, formula and rules this was example number one so we are going to do another example and then we will wrap up this lecture uh, any questions so far no then we will proceed okay so we will proceed with example number 7.6 okay example 7.6 this is basically a continuation of previous example okay it is same thing now previously we only uh, in the previous example we calculated pi 2 for model and prototype right which was reynolds number and now in this example we are going to calculate uh, fd which is drag force and this is normal dimensional parameter pi 1 okay so now in this example we are going to calculate pi 1 for model and prototype so let's move to this example number 2 so example number two is a follow-up of the previous example. Suppose the engineers run the wind tunnels at 221 mile per hour to achieve similarity between the model. So now I have the similarity between the model and prototype, okay? The aerodynamic drag force on the model car is measured with a drag balance, okay? This is the same drag balance, okay? Several drag readings are recorded and the average drag force of the model is 94.3 Newtons. So on the model, average drag force on the model, okay, how much force is acting on the model is 94.3 Newtons, okay? Predict the aerodynamic drag force on the prototype. So they want to know what is the aerodynamic drag force on the prototype, okay? Something, so this is related to pi 1. So we are going to use the formula of pi 1. <clears throat> so pi 1 model pi 1 prototype okay <clears throat> this is force drag force we need to predict over rho v square l square okay model 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 and for prototype f d p whole divided by rho p v square p l square p okay so let's equate to we know that it is similarity we have achieved similarity so let's equate them pi 1 is equals to pi 1 
model similarity so what we know we know uh, the drag force is given the drag force for uh, model fd model is given which is 94.3 newton what we want need to calculate we need to predict the drag force on prototype this is something unknown okay so i know models drag force i know the density i know the velocity which i have calculated previously i know the ratio of length then i know want to calculate this parameter one unknown i know the density velocity length everything is known so when we are going to equate them we can calculate the velocity of sorry drag force f p p can be calculated okay this is equals to f d m density p over density m velocity p over velocity m whole square and length p over length m whole square so when i'm going to put the values the drag force on the prototype is equals to 103 newtons <clears throat> so if i know the drag force on my model then i can determine the drag force on my prototype using the condition of similarity and non dimensional less parameter <clears throat> very simple <clears throat> so this was the answer now we will look at the last slide of this lecture here they are saying that if a water tunnel is used instead of a wind tunnel to test the one fifth scale model the water tunnel speed required to achieve similarity so let's say that i replace replace uh, air with water if i replace air with water then what will happen okay so quite simple i will use the properties of water okay the density the viscosity and everything so so when when they did the calculation okay and and this is uh, done on the model only so so the air uh, we use air for testing our uh, prototype but we use water for testing our model okay so in the formula we just use density of water and dynamic viscosity of water for model only that's it so in the formula we just replace uh, here the density of water 998 kg per meter cube and using this formula we got the velocity v is equals to 16.1 miles per hour 16.1 miles per hour okay so i can change the fluid also when testing model and prototype so what does it tells us one advantage of water tunnel is that the required water tunnel speed is much lower than the required for wind tunnel using the same size so you can see that in the previous example the air speed was 221 mile per hour so if i want to achieve similarity i need to put my air at such high speed so what i can do is i can replace it with water to get a speed of 16.1 so i can put my car under water and then i will uh, put water at 16.1 mile per hour okay and using water i can test my model and predict the properties of prototype this is also this is something that can be done also so in the if you see in the previous slide uh 221 so velocity of model i need my air to be running at 221 mile per hour that's too fast so even normal cars uh, run it's so difficult to run on highway at 221 mile per hour so what i want to do is to make my testing easy for model i can put rather than air i can put water inside when i put water 
inside i can just run my water at 16.1 mile per hour and then using this 16.1 mile per hour i can predict the drag force or other properties of my uh, model <clears throat> so this was all dimensional analysis and similarity okay uh, we saw that pi is uh, are equal when similarity is achieved okay this is also saying the similarity can be achieved even when the model fluid is different than the prototype so this is a very very important uh, statement okay so so this was in today's lecture this was all about uh, dimensions so we learned about dimensions we learned about units we learned about dimensional homogeneity we learned about non dimensional parameter nd we learned about uh, similarity okay and in the next section we are going to learn about buckingham pi theorem the last topic of the last chapter okay in this buckingham pi theorem we are going to learn how to derive this pi we got this pi rho v d over mu right this non dimensional this is non dimensional parameter but how to derive this formula how to get this formula okay so we in in this examples this rho vd or mu was given right but how we got rho vd or mu we are going to learn how to calculate or how to determine non dimensional parameters using this buckingham pi theorem and in the next class and that would be our last class and then we will finish our uh, fluid mechanics course so that was, this was all for today's lecture until slide number i think uh, 17 okay and in the next uh, class we will be going for buckingham pi theorem so if you have any questions please go ahead and ask me otherwise uh, thank you for listening and quiz will be for bha guys at around 1:00 uh, o'clock or something